Uh, welcome to the postgraduate pediatric orthopedic video series. And I'm Satal Schreider, I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon. Uh, in this video, I'll take you through what a hexapod frame is and different components of the frame as an introduction to the next videos in which we show you how to correct deformities. Uh, in this picture, on the left hand side, there's a lizard of a frame, and on the right hand side, there's the Talia spatial frame or TSF. Two important differences between these two frames. An Elizaro frame uses a uh, physical hinges, and in order to correct multi deformity, it has to be done sequentially. For example, a deformity of various shortening and rotation. First, for example, uh, correct the uh, shortening deformity, then change the physical hinges into different place to correct the deformity or rotation. This is not the case with the Taylor Spatial Frame or indeed any computerized hex support. Uh, all the deformities corrected simultaneously uh, using virtual hinges that the computer decide uh, based on uh, surgeon preference where these hinges will be. And despite the massive cost differences, uh, the TSF frame become popular because of its efficiency. Uh, once the patency expired, several uh, hex support have been introduced to the market. TL hex from Orthofix, uh, Maxiframe from Synthes, and Orthex from Orthopediatrics. Uh, we conducted a comparison study among these frames, and we found there's no difference among them in terms of uh, the final correction and the accuracy of correction. Uh, however, uh, there might be uh, differences in the software that help the surgeon to achieve the correction. Uh, we felt that the TL hex frame has more advanced software and give you some advantages that are not available with other frames. That's why we're going to use it as a, an example in this video. TL hex frame or indeed any frame made of two rings, one at the top and one at the bottom, and these two rings are connected by uh, what we call them struts. Uh, guys, I really think it's important really to understand the struts. Uh, the struts, uh, each hexaboard has six struts and they're really different between different companies and it's really important to, to understand how they work. Uh, this is a strut for a TL hex. Uh, it has two ends, one top, one bottom. These goes into the rings and they fix in the rings. If you can see there's uh, uh, laser marks, laser black marks. This is to when you, when you engage it with the ring, it should be completely disappear underneath. And they are on purpose, they are attached to the outside of the ring, not inside of the ring, so that they don't come in the way. They come into four sizes. This is the long, this is the medium, and this is the short. Okay, and there's extra short, in which the, uh, the end is at the middle, not at the end. There are two mechanisms for these uh, straps to get longer or shorter. One is the acute which is usually done by the doctors and uh, by losing this is this bolt you can shorten and lengthen and you can see the laser mark the red one change as we slide the upside down okay so this is zero this is five this is 10 15 and so on so if you fix this one you, you aim for this bolt to stay fixed through the whole length of procedure is the gradual correction mechanism which is the, this one from the knob there. Uh, these are usually fixed to the top and bottom of the ring. I bring the frame, this frame. Okay. So for example this example here, uh, this is fixed at the top and this is at the bottom. You can see here on the knob, on this knob, there's an arrow. If you turn the arrow toward the plus side, it's going to lengthen the strut. Interestingly, on the on the TLS uh, strut, when you lengthen them, the number gets smaller, not bigger. So this is something to bear in mind. So if this if this strut, according to the program, need length uh, need lengthening, you turn it, and when you turn half turn, you hear a click. This is the click. This is a half turn. Then you have to pull it up, and you turn it again, and you hear another click. Okay. And you see the green marker goes change according to the numbers. And this is what the patient do as they look at the program and they adjust. So for the gradual correction, uh, the patient need to turn this knob. 
uh, if you look at this, an arrow there with a plus. If you turn the arrow toward the plus sign, the stripe gets longer. However, the number is shorter, gets shorter. So, for example, if I turn it this way, you hear a click, this is half a turn. Then this end of the half a turn. Each one full turn is one millimeter, and you can see it has moved from 15 to one millimeter. Okay, further. This is half, and this is another half. So this is move another millimeter. In order to turn it, if you try to turn it like this, it doesn't turn. So you have to pull it to start with, then you'll turn till it, you hear the click, okay? And this is how, if you want to shorten it, it has to be turned the other way around. Okay, and the number get changed as well. Sometimes to make it easier for the patient, we put these little markers on the top. If we want them to turn it this way, we put it in this position. Okay, so the patient knows this, they're gonna go this direction. If we want them to turn it the other way around, we just simply just turn it around. So just to help the patient and uh, remember which direction they should go if they cannot see these very well. I would like to emphasize the fact that the number gets smaller when the strut lengthening is a unique feature for TL hacks frame and uh, it can be very confusing and this is not uh, the case with other frames such as uh, TSF or uh, Orthex frame. And uh, the last thing about the strut is that have to number them. Uh, there are little markers. These are color coded from one till uh, six. Uh, and these usually clipped on the uh, uh, struts. As mentioned earlier, uh, the frame made of uh, proximal and distal ring. Uh, this is the proximal ring. It's full, full circular. These rings can come in different sizes and in different shapes to match the specific anatomy. The struts are marked where they attach on the string with one, two, three, four, five, and six. And these are color coded. A red color is usually given to strut number one, then orange for two, yellow for three, green for four, blue for five, and purple for six. These struts are also connected to corresponding points at the distal ring, as we can see later in the other videos. Uh, this will bring us to the end of our videos, in which we describe uh, the different components of a, a typical circular frame. The thing that we haven't covered yet is the software uh, and how to operate the software, which we're going to see in the next video. Thank you.